Good day. So this is just a quick video uh, that just shows what it means to overconstrain a model uh, in NX motion. So the previous sections we handled uh, taking an assembly, uh, a ge geometrical assembly, uh, into the NX motion side, um, adding some links, adding some joints, and solving that in order to get a dynamic solution. And now we're moving over to just when you're adding joints to to a model. Um, it's just always it's important to remember that what what a joint actually does in terms of the math. So, if we look at this, uh, this is just a very simple um, display of a door. So, it's exactly what you would assume. So, you've got the door and you've got two hinges at the top and bottom. Okay, so intuitively, this makes sense. Uh, if if someone tells you to model a door, this is probably the way you would go. The problem with this is what joints do is they they constrain degrees of freedom okay so here I've got a body and as soon as a body is uh, um, created in a motion or in in the motion side you've got a body that body has got six degrees of freedom okay so every time you add a joint so you taking degrees of freedom away from this body okay so if we look at the total degrees of freedom of this system, in this case, we've got the body, which is six, and then our revolute joints. Our revolute joints takes away five degrees of freedom each. Okay, that's important to know. So it takes away three translational degrees of freedom and two rot rotational degrees of freedom, leaving only one rotational degree of freedom, which makes 100% sense if you think about how a, a hinge of a door works. It, it, it just rotates about one axis okay so as is the case here so if you start looking at the math you say we've got six degrees of freedom minus five degrees of freedom minus another five degrees of freedom as you can see you, you end up with a negative value this negative value shows you that this model is over constrained in the left hand pane you can see that if I drag this open there's a, there's a column here that says Grubler count so the, the equation that I just uh, calculated was the Grubler count. So you take the total degrees of freedom of the system and you uh, um, subtract all of the degrees of freedom that the joints in the system take away. So the problem with this, if I solve this solution, I can see that at the top here, we've got a heap load of redundant constraints. So it tells you, listen, you've got redundant constraints. So it tells you rotation about X is redundant, translation along Y is redundant, and so on. So we know that, so I can, the problem is, uh, let me tell you this, the problem with um, with motion or multi-body dynamics uh, uh, solvers is they switch off um, constraints. The problem is you never know which a constraint is switched off so if I solve this and you'll see that well I didn't impose any motion so nothing's going to happen so it's not like from from uh, a visual perspective you'll be able to quickly see whether there's redundant constraints in some instances there will be but the best way is just to have a look at your Grubel account and say okay well obviously one of these is redundant in this case both of them do exactly the same job so I can just delete one of them, and there you can see our Grubler count is one, which is uh, larger than zero, which also means that um, th this m there's w still one open degree of freedom. And we know that there's an open degree of freedom because this thing can rotate at will. So uh, j let's just quickly, I'm just going to change the direction of the gravity so we can see exactly what I mean. So I'll just go for that direction so if I press OK and I solve this now oh sorry let me just solve it again let me just show you in this case so you can see at the top of this there's no redundant constraints and I can play and that's exactly what 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 should happen so just to show you again if I add that other joint in in this configuration I can just add it here at the bottom I'm just adding it to that specific spot there. Our vector is already in the correct direction between ground. It's a little bit small. Let me just make it a little bit bigger. 
there you can see it's added I'm going to solve it again and we'll get that redundant constraint problem again I just want to show you that the results you won't really be able to see a difference between the two results so but it's important that if you start measuring values that you won't know where the force is transferred to the ground uh, well between the ground and the link that's the big thing because you don't know which constraint is switched off by the solver so this concludes this section on over constraining a model